vision, individual performance. Modus operandi and the encounter with Jack the Ripper. I am a criminologist. I study various serial killers throughout history. My most useful tool would have to be modus operandi, meaning I find ties between all these murders and try and find ways that tell tale that it's the same killer through a signature of sorts. Now, the killer who gave this to us would be Jack the Ripper. He is my favorite because he forced Scotland Yard to explore new ways. He forced them to come up with this way of catching this new killer. They had never encountered someone like this before. I think he is one of the most interesting people. My favorite resources from Jack would be the letters he sent to the police. He sent letters like the From Hell letter. He sent that with half of a kidney from one of his victims. He sent the saucy Jackie postcard, the Openshaw letter, and the most famous, Dear Bob. That's the letter that gave the trade name Jack the Ripper. It ends with yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Don't mind me giving the trade name. Jack stood out from other serial killers. He would come up from behind his murder, his victims, and slash twice. That was not all he did. He was not satisfied until the bodies were completely mutilated. But that's not all that sets him apart. He didn't have to seek out his victims. His victims would have sought him. I am a police officer. I have been assigned to the special task force to find you this infamous Jeff the Ripper. He keeps teasing us, giving us little clues, but he's just right out of our grasp every time. I don't understand. If only there was something we could do. I, I just, there's got to be something. They all have their throats slashed. They were, they were all missing some body part. They were all prostitutes. They all had to find some way to make a living. They were all alcoholics. They were all poor. They were all on the streets. These are all things that they all have in common. Maybe that's what we need to stop looking at. The things these women had in common, not the things that set them apart. That's what we've been doing wrong all along. We've been looking at these the wrong way, from the wrong perspective. I think we can do this. I know we can. My task force of 51 men and I, we can catch this man. We can apprehend him and save these poor women from meeting a death as foul as the rest of them. I'm a prostitute. I have nothing. I was married once, with children too, and a family and a life. That was all torn away from me. My husband divorced me. He gave me an allowance for a time, but it wasn't much to live off of. I had to buy food, survive off the clothing I have, much less buy thread and needle for repairs. I had I barely had enough for lodging, for dose money. Two pennies a night. That was even to 
to lay on a crowded bed. For one penny, if you were lucky, you could stand there with your arms up on a wire with a bunch of others. Just sleep standing up. The conditions in Whitechapel, London are awful. All the women are terrified. We don't know where to turn. We don't know who's going to be next. This killer is awful. He's going after whoever he can find. You don't know if your next customer will be your last. You don't know if you will last to the next day. A group of us, we came together. We wrote a petition. We signed it. We sent it to Queen Victoria herself. We can only hope that one day, one day he'll be caught. They say in the letters, in the news, that they're receiving letters from him. Sir Charles Warren feels that some acknowledgement is due on all sides for the cordial credit, for the cordial cooperation of the inhabitants, and he is much gratified that the police officers have carried out so delicate a duty with the marked goodwill of all those who have they have come in contact. Police questioned me. They asked me if I had seen someone. I saw a man with Mary Kelly before she died. He was tall, scraggly, and had a top hat. That's all I saw before they darted off. But my next, the only thing on my mind was finding my next customer. I, I needed a way to get to my alcohol, to beat my addiction. And I needed a way to stay off the streets for the night. It's not safe. Nobody's safe anymore. How, how do we know? I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Dear boss, keep hearing the police have caught me. It's pretty funny. Got a good laugh from that jerk about leather apron. I shan't quit ripping till I've been caught, for I have no room to stop. I take pleasure in this. Gratitude. I'm taking these filthy girls off the street. That last one. I didn't give him much time to squeal. I shan't be done. I have no reason to stop. I have no reason to live. So until you catch me with your boss, I expect to keep finding the bodies. In the next letter, I'll send you some earlobes for my victim. She won't squeal much, I can guarantee you that much. You won't catch me either. Good luck to your boss. Thank you. 